with another episode of straight people the podcast for straight people by queer people because straight people don't have what enough they don't have enough uh so we got this little podcast for you to talk about straight culture if it even exists we haven't figured it out yet so we're still working on it uh this week we're joined by our guest who is a recent transplant to the south moved from nyc to chattanooga tennessee uh, Jeff Greenspan, how are you doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with how much you laughed during my the idea of me moving here. <laughs> you just referred to yourself before I started recording as a novelty in the South, so uh, I thought well, it was appropriate. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. No, okay. No, um, well, uh, welcome to uh, the South, and God, God love you for for <laughs> coming down here. That sounds uh, very close to bless your heart. <laughs> bless your heart. Bless your heart. I don't know you well enough to bless your heart yet. Oh. Um, but God, God love you. God love you. As, by the end. You yeah, will. yeah, yeah, exactly. So Jeff, this is what we do here at straight people. We don't, you know, we don't fuck around. We don't dick around. You know what I'm saying? We get straight to the point. Um, so tell me, how do you identify? Uh, as gay. As is gay. That okay? Is that all yeah. right? You don't have to ask permission. This is a, a zone. No permission granted. Uh, no permission needed. I'm gay, but I'm not comfortable with it. And I know okay. that's not. Yeah. I mean, I grew up at a time when, you know, I, I was uh, inundated with messages about how bad it was to be gay. Yeah. And now, you know, you, you have to be prideful that there's no other way. Otherwise, you'll be canceled. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have. I mean, I well, by who, though? Who would cancel you is what I want to know. The other gays in New York. I oh, mean, well, yeah. you know, they're too busy. They got, uh, you know. All the gays that I know are, have their hands full right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so, <others> I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but uh, well, here in here in Georgia and Atlanta, uh, the gays weren't real big on quarantining. You know what I mean? So like we had like we had an unofficial like pride parties where it was like people were spotting their primary care physicians without oh. masks, shirtless, <laughs> dancing in the club. <laughs> so and, what, and was there a big spike? Uh, there was, there were spikes like, like after, yeah, basically like after those events or little spikes here and there, um, Atlanta's sort of like continuously been like, I feel like half the people are quarantining and the other half of the people are like, pan, what's a pandemic? That sounds fun. Um, mm -hmm. and I've been out, especially the gay, the gay folks. Um, so, but not to make it all about the pandemic, let's talk more about you. So you grew up, you see, you grew up in a time where you weren't made, uh, you were made to feel bad about being gay. Tell me like your first memory, like when did you, cause sometimes like when people realize they're gay, they don't realize they're gay. They just realize they're different. You know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. you go really far back. So like, what's your earliest memory of either specifically gayness or just that you weren't like the other boys kind of situation? Well, I, I mean, I was drawn to other, other boys, you know, but that's also normal as a young boy to want to have camaraderie with with other boys and, and girls are ew, you know? Yeah. And and then there's a time when that your friends start being interested in girls and and there's still a t there's still a window where it's like, it's okay that you're not. Yeah. And then then it becomes, you know, um where I, I was like, I, I remember thinking, well, I guess just the right girl hasn't come along yet. You know? <laughs> there's gonna be a girl that's going to wipe all these ideas out of my head yeah. of, of, of same sex attraction. Uh, and then I remember, I guess maybe I was uh, 11 or 12, and I looked in the dictionary at like homosexual. We had a very old, now this was in the 70s. And yeah. Our dictionary was from the 60s. Yeah. So it was a mental illness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm ill. Yeah. And, and, and it's uh, an embarrassing type of ill. Like it would bring shame. So I didn't tell anybody and I, and I denied it. I go, well, I'm that can't be me because also all the messages I saw in the media about what gay was, I didn't seem to, to present that way. Yeah. Gays were really only shown as flamboyant or very like a fairy or yeah. like the wacky neighbor, the confirmed bachelor yeah. or an AIDS patient in the eighties or yeah. a criminal. 
or um uh, uh so when uh, you say you were denying it was it just to yourself or yeah I go, well you... that can't be me like i don't yeah. i didn't see other i felt like i was somewhat masculine i know these terms are you know uh shunned now but like <laughs> you know but like i only saw the i like the people in my high school that were gay were you they didn't they, they didn't have to come out they were like they were everybody the gay, knew they, yeah they everybody were just knows. they behaved that way yeah and there were people who were like questionable but then they were like and i kind of i don't know what people thought about me or what i thought about myself but like it didn't seem like i was being like i wasn't called a faggot or anything like that in high school that wasn't the way that i was picked on yeah there were plenty of other reasons to pick on me in high school they didn't get to that one yet yeah um so i just kind of felt like well i guess just sex isn't my thing and and women are i just kind of just either when i did think about sex i i just felt like well it'll happen one day where i'll be into women because i don't i don't I'm not like what the rest of TV shows me what being gay is. Yeah. Because there really, it was, it, it, there wasn't this idea of fluidity. There wasn't this idea in, in, in popular culture yeah. or that, there, there, that there's a spectrum and, and it, it caused a lot of anxiety for me. So who knows, maybe. So were maybe, you like, do you think that like you were at that point, the, the times that we're describing, like if you saw a depiction of gayness on television, did it embarrass you? Like, you, do you know what I mean? Like when you no, saw, or, did, like, that's not, or you just didn't identify with it. it I, just didn't wasn't identif I, didn't, yeah. I didn't identify with Like if there was like, now there are TV is there characters. One, is there one specific depiction that you're thinking of while you're talking about it? Yeah, Monroe from Too Close for Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Who was never like, he wasn't explicitly gay. So they of never said he was gay. But was. yeah, James Jake Bullock. Who right. was on the Hollywood Squares and was very, right. very right. like a, a kind of like a bullion, not necessarily right. effeminate, but he was a very like kind of like oh, kind of out or there. Paul kinda. Lynn, yeah, another center square. Oh, absolutely, Paul Lynn. Yeah, Are yeah. All the center squares gay? Is that the thing? Is that uh, Whoopi was the center square, so maybe I don't know. Yeah, they might. Right? <laughs> um, but uh, that's interesting that 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 because everybody always has one, and it, I had the opposite reaction. I saw Paul Lynn and I was like, I want to, I want to be that guy. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I was, as a little kid, my parents were always trying to correct. So I was somebody who was always very flamboyant and effeminate and they, they would just endlessly correct the behavior. So there was who was like, the guy with the confetti. Who was the guy that had all oh, the, um, Charles Nelson Riley, Charles Nelson Riley. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh no, and that's, then, that's actually, also... that's actually Rip, Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor okay, right, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Sorry, but all right. of those people. If you, yeah. If, if you remember three's company, there was John, there was Jack. Yep. Who was straight, yeah. but he had to pretend to be gay, yep. to live with the women, and it was clear that yeah. the, the landlord didn't yeah. like that idea. Yeah, it was grossed out by it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that was like actually that gay subtext in that show was like it it explained everything to me about that like, you know, like being gay is wrong, but there are people out there who are gay. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like there's just, you know, cause like my husband grew up like in a small town. So they have the, the concept of like basically the town fag, the one gay person that there's one in every, you know what I mean? But like that show taught me that, oh, in California, cause I remember around that time I heard the term that California is the land of fruits and nuts. And I was like, oh, okay, well, when I get old enough, <laughs> I'm not going right. to you know what I mean? So I just think it's funny. Um, and, I remember, so, I would, and then I remember maybe like in my early twenties, I would buy gay porn, yeah, use it. <laughs> and then throw it away. Like I didn't even want it in the house. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, well, now that's over. I've got that out of my system. Yeah. And like, you know. You're like somebody who's quitting smoking who buys a pack yeah. on Friday night and throws it away on Sunday morning or whatever it is. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. so funny. Um, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> tell me then, so when, when did you, what, like what's your first experience of going to like a gay bar or meeting gay people where you felt comfortable? Where, when did that come Oh, about? I wasn't really comfortable with it until uh, pretty late, like in my early 30s. Yeah. So it was a really long time. So did you ever date women? Did you ever like... You yeah, know, yeah. Did you try? These poor women. Those poor women. <laughs> um, so you did mention... They probably had a great time. I did a lot of listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, did you mention that in your high school that there were people that you knew were gay. Have yeah. you ever talked to any of them since then? Have you ever... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and think they, they, I think they, they said they thought I knew I was gay. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah. But did they when you talked to them about their high school experience, did they was did they suffer all through it? Because some people are like, like, we had, a, we had a couple people in my high school that were out gay and sure they were picked on some, but the overwhelming majority of people just sort of accepted that they were gay. And even back then, yeah, I mean, like the late I went 90s, to, 90s. I mean, I went to a suburban high school. I mean, I, I was born in Brooklyn, but my parents fled to the suburbs, you know, when I was three. Yeah. So it, nobody was 
you know, um, abused, you know, this wasn't like, you know, uh, where you're strung up on a fence and left to die, you know, yeah. it was just, you know, um, they kept, they had their own table yeah. at lunch, yeah. you know, and they, they did their thing. Yeah. And then there were the, th- there were the regular fags, there were the theater fags, you know, yeah. there were like all these, <laughs> that's what they had. But wow, the reality okay. is, there's probably tons of guys on the baseball team yeah. and the football team who presented as traditionally masculine. Yeah. Who, and I know some of them now are gay. Yeah. You know? And there were some of those guys who really liked to wrestle with me in sweatpants. Yeah. You know, a lot. <laughs> there's one in particular. I can't get, yeah. I would love to get in touch with him. Um, uh, and he was always hard. Yeah. But then again, like also, like when you're 17 and 16, you're just hard all the time anyway. So if Absolutely. you're wrestling around. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. That's so funny. Um, so you said you, we were talking a little bit earlier and then I met you originally on a comedy show that you were in town for in Atlanta. So you, so you've been doing stand up for four years. You yeah. said, so you, yeah. I'm, I'm a late starter too. I started when I was 38. So yeah, I started when I was 46. Yeah. yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on like starting comedy at that age? First of all, let's just talk a little bit about that and then being gay and doing stand up. So you did it, you started in New York. Yeah. Um, do you, what do you think is more? Do you think either of those are a barrier for you? Is one more of a barrier than the other? Or is it just like the like starting later meant you had more stories to tell? I think whatever it is in life, a, a, a barrier is only a barrier if you if you perceive it as a barrier. It yeah. can be, you know, it's um, it's it, it could also be a, a leverage point. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have more life experience than certainly these 23 year olds that I run around with or 25 year olds. Um, but the, and I've had more ex- just, be- just because of what my career was. I had a career in the creative arts and in advertising and in public speaking. And so I, I did have some of those things going for me, but um, there's other, you know, my pros also come with certain cons that young people don't have. So it's it's just how you use those things. I, I, I've, I've been pretty lucky to have, you know, really good talented friends that I that have helped hone, continue to help hone what I'm doing. Like I'm, I don't, you know, I told myself when I started this, I would give it five years to see if I had any aptitude for it at all. Yeah. And I'm on year four. And one of those years was COVID. Yeah. So, and I, and I feel like the people that I, I, at least in New York, I think one of the ways you judge if you have merits, merit is, are you hanging with people who have merit? You know? Yeah. And if, and, and if you are, then either you are talented or you're all suffering the same delusion that you're all, <laughs> that you're all have maybe some talent or some, some uh, potential. Yeah. Um, so my age, you know, certainly there are people who, there will people, listen, I remember being 23 and not wanting to hear what a 50 year old thinks. Yeah. So there's, there's that, but I'm sure everybody comes to the stage with, uh, whether they're gay or black or Puerto Rican or, or whatever they have, if, if there might be somebody who wants to discount them, reject them, underestimate them, um, blow them off. Uh, and, and if you just keep doing comedy, you'll realize that all that shit is bullshit. It, yeah. it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, because those same people who will, will tell you you won't succeed, then when you have any successes, they'll say, oh, it's because he's gay. <laughs> you know, they'll say- I've definitely had that. I've or because he's old. That. Oh, they yeah, had to have somebody aging. Yeah. So it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's it's, funny. I feel that the, if you keep doing it, um, the cream rises to the crop, yeah. to the top. So yeah. do you think that like uh, in the last four years, have you seen a difference in comedy in terms of like queerness and queer inclusion? Um, or do you think that it, like, it, I wonder if you can notice that in New York the, the same way. It, yeah, I see a lot in the South. I, I see it a lot in the South that there's way more queer comics. I just wonder. Oh, there's a lot in New York City. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember I went to a, uh, a, a, a gay themed, it was a mic. It was just an open mic, but it took yeah. like three weeks to get on it. And it was like booked way in advance. It was a booked mic. Yeah. And I went to do my set and a lot of my set was about not being into being gay. And I was met with you know, uh, synchronized disappointment you know, <laughs> from the audience yeah. and really no laughs. And when I came off stage, there was this female comic who I really enjoy. Uh, and she's like, that was a good set. I go, good set. They hated me. She goes, oh no, they, they hate you. You should never come back. But that was a good, that was a good set. Uh, and that, that particular room <laughs> only wanted to hear people who were very excited and very happy and very yeah. proud of being gay. And I, and I respect that. But I think yeah. there should be room for people who had different life experiences to be like, it wasn't always like this. I lived yeah. a life in shame and I can laugh about it now. I'm not, you know, and I still have residual shame. I yeah. mean, uh, but I've decided to make that funny as much as I can. You know? yeah. So yes, there is a lot of inclusion in New York. There are gay only shows and gay yeah. only mics and, and uh, um, 
See, I see but that. I, also, I don't see that as inclusion always. I see uh, yeah. like uh, inclusion to me is that they're the the audience is is comprised of queer people and straight people, and the lineups have queer people and straight people. That's inclusive to me. You know what I mean? And that's I what did, I see I, more in Atlanta. Like we don't have a gay scene. We have very few gay specific shows, but mm -hmm. there are queer people in almost every audience at every show. Yeah, you know I mean, listen, mean? in New York, there are queer yeah. people in every audience. Yeah. Unless you're going to like a frat, even at a frat show, I'm sure yeah. there's probably lots of, yeah. <laughs> lots of queer shows. I get asked to do the frat shows in Atlanta a lot, and I'm always like, they want, you know what I mean? Like I'm the opposite of what the frat guys are, but that's what they, they, they want that. They want you to come and be like, not them basically. It's so you funny. Know? If you really think about it, gays were the first fraternity, like a group of oh. men bound together by a secret. You know? yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that secret handshake. It's so long. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to, right? All right, we're going to pivot. So I do a little Q and a, like, um, we talk about straight culture. So okay. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions about quote unquote, straight culture. And, um, and then we're going to go through a list of some stuff and you're going to tell me whether you think that they belong to straight people or gay people or both or neither. Okay. It's all for fun. So none of it's this serious. is for fun because obviously everything belongs to everyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. We'll let the straights think that anyways. Okay. So, um, uh, what's a straight brand of clothing? What do straight people wear? Uh, Gap. <laughs> okay. Um, even though uh, that sounds gay, right? I don't know. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> What is like, what, what's a straight, what's straight music? Like name a band or a genre or a song that is straight people music. Oh, Jesus. I don't even know straight people music. I mean, I don't, I don't even know straight people music. I don't even know. Okay. I, I'm 50 years old, so I don't really know too much about music. Like, okay, okay. Like well, hip hop has become super gay, right? Yeah. Like this oh, absolutely. Gay I mean, just this week alone, God. Right? Um, and okay. Connie, I know he's straight, but like, that's he's, he's but a lot of he's, queer elements. But he's like modern straight, right? Because he because that um, I can't remember what her name is. The um, something the the ex girlfriend came out and was like, "You like fingers in your butt, like in a bunch okay. of tweets." Oh, so. oh, how about Nickelback? I mean, Nickelback. Bad, I guess yeah, I think that would be good. That, that's a fair. Okay, that, that's um, straight. Yeah. Why do straight men draw dicks on everything? Oh, uh, I, I think it's the same reason they do the hazing in the fraternity. I think that they're, they're, I think there's an underlying fear of being gay. Yeah. Maybe. So by making fun of it, it shows like, hey, I'm not, I'm not a fag. Yeah. You know? I, don't, so why I don't, don't know. Why don't gay men draw um, vaginas on everything then? You don't or, le or lesbians. I've been drawing. I've been drawing ever... everywhere I go. Oh, you, you okay, go. is that your move? All right. Yeah, that's, what I, okay. that's, my, that's my tag. Is that your merch? Is just like a hand drawn right. vagina? Oh, I should do that. You're on stage, just doing a just doing a free free draw as you do the set, and then be like, I got t-shirts in the back. It'll be this vagina. This is your vagina. I think vaginas man. are pretty hard to draw. I I mean, you're really drawing what's not there. You know what I mean? It's like jazz. It's like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Um, why do straight men piss in Gatorade bottles? Why do what do what? Why do gay? Why do straight men? Sorry, pit the, why do straight men pee in Gatorade bottles? Is, is that, that news to you? Is that news to you or? Well, I think that's isn't that really? Um, oh, they do do that. Yeah, that's so strange. I think but, it's. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I, I think it's like a driving thing. I feel like it's because they make the bottle big enough to put a dick in. You know what I mean? Like other, like a, like a, like if you have a a Sprite bottle, you're not gonna be able to fit your dick in it. But like, that's true. Some, some people's dicks are just big enough where you could put them in a Gatorade bottle. I, I think don't... that make, yeah, that probably makes them feel like they're girthy, right? <laughs> they like to put their dicks next to remote controls a lot. Uh, Although gay guys do that too. That's true. That's true. Um, the last dick pic I got, it was a, it was, it was the, it was the dick next to a Barbie doll. To show the proportions, which I was like, this is the gayest dick pic I've ever. A Barbie doll for scale? That's yeah, for scale, strange. and it was bigger than the Barbie doll. It was terrifying. Um, you know, okay. said when someone uses like an Apple TV remote as the thing that they're putting in there. like a tic, uh, like a Tic Tac or a uh, uh, stick of gum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a, a series of items, and you're gonna tell me whether they are gay or straight. Okay. 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 Um, or you don't know. You know okay. who knows? Uh, okay. Uh, paintball. Straight. Okay, laser tag. Straight. Football, American football. Straight. Baseball. That's pretty gay. Fast patch, fast pitch softball. Gay. Roller skating. Gay. Roller blading. 
Gay. Cross stitch. Gay. Uh, needle point. Gay. Bucket hats. What's a bucket hat? It's one of those hats that's like like Blossom War on the show Blossom. It's like a hat like this. So oh, Blossom War, I think it's pretty gay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, tiny top hats. I think that's gay too. I've never even what's a tiny just, top hat? You just think so I'm wearing a regular size top hat and then I take it off and I've got a tiny top hat on. What straight person's doing that? I, do, I look, I just made the questionnaire, came up with the I think, whole idea. I think you'd be, I think you'd be <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I was in my other because I do it in another room. In my other room I have a tiny top hat I just put on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um that's... okay. Lemonade. I think that's for both. For both? Okay. Yeah. Mike's hard lemonade. That's gay. I mean, anything with the word Mike's hard in it, I would think. Yeah. That. Okay, um, French toast. I have to say French toast is bi. Bi? Avocado yeah. toast. That That's... I think it's straight <clears throat> people who want to be adventurous. Okay, champagne toasts. I think that's straight. I think I think gay people have better things to toast with. Okay. Um, we just do bumps. <laughs> yeah, key bumps. Uh, cowboy boots. I think those are very gay. Okay. I think the whole cab I think the whole Western culture is pretty gay. You think so? Okay. I do. It reads it reads pretty gay. The the way it's coming back now is definitely gay. Do you know what I mean? Like the well, everything's been gay. Like or, like Orville Peck and the like the um Casey Musgrave look and all that. I don't know, it's super gay. <laughs> okay. Um so I said cowboy boots now. Scrunchy boots. I don't what are scrunchy boots? <clears throat> a scrunchy boot is a soft leather boot that kind of like like goes down like in a little kind of crinkly wrinkly way they used to be called sebagos back in the day oh those are gay yeah Th they were worn like by metrosexual gay. yeah they were worn by dorothy and the um golden girls a lot a sebago oh, those are come on. okay <laughs> poodles you just poodles poodles standard poodles standard poodle yeah okay a uh, french bulldogs straight high ponies high pony like a high pony What's a high, like a oh, ponytail? Like a ponytail, high pony, yeah. On a man? On any, just a high pony, just it, in general. I find all Whatever hair, you imagine in your mind. I find all hair to be very gay. You find hair to be gay? Yes. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. That's just because I'm bald. Side pony. Oh, that's gay. Okay. Um, mountain climbing. I think that's a, I think Straits brought that to us. Okay, social climbing. <laughs> Well, gays perfected it. Okay. I mean, that's um, yeah. <laughs> biscuits. That's that's pretty gay. Okay, beignets. What's a beignet? You don't know what a beignet? Oh, welcome to the South, brother. Thank you. A beignet is like a is like a fried piece of. It's like basically like a donut with powdered sugar. Very common in uh, New Orleans. Um, that sounds like that should be for both. Okay. Um, okay. The final question. You doing did amazing. Did so I win? Did I, am I winning? <laughs> you are gay. You, oh, you said er, you're gay, and your your gay perception made everything gay. So good yeah, job. I think everything's gay. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, okay. The last question is: You're at a wedding, like a friend of the family's wedding. So these are, imagine this is somebody you know, or like you barely know them, but your family knows them. And you're there for whatever reason. Okay. And uh, it's in like a hotel banquet, like a Sheraton, like an airport Sheraton banquet hall. And um, they are doing, they, everybody just ate and they're about to do the father daughter dance. And what song does the father and the bride dance to? The father of the bride and the bride dance to? At a straight wedding? Yeah, absolutely straight um, wedding. Oh, don't they do like the wind beneath my wing shit and that kind of stuff? Don't they do that kind of those kind of dances? This is your wedding, you tell me. Oh, it's my wedding? No, it's your the you're at. You're at. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be the wind beneath my wings. I think. Okay. Which I don't know that one. Can you sing a little bit? Ed Midler. But what's the what's the um chorus? Oh, don't do this to me. What are you doing? I just don't you, remember. You, tell are the, me. you are the wind beneath I can't sing it. Come on now. Don't you fly, know that you are my hero? Fly. Everything. Yeah. Oh, so you do know the song? I, I don't. I, I can't remember. I, I I don't sing very well. <laughs> I hope to be you my hero. You can fly that higher than an eagle. Eagle, right? Higher than an eagle. You, you are the wind beneath, beneath my, wings. my wings. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's pretty gay. Um, yeah. Did you ever? What? Do you ever see that movie Beaches? You know, I haven't. I've only you seen. Haven't? 
Yeah. You're not a big uh, Bette Midler fan? You know, it's funny. My mom used to listen to her a lot. Yeah. But th those bathhouse uh, shows, you yeah. know, on eight tracks. Yeah. Eight track tapes. And I thought she was really funny. Yeah. And crazy and bizarre. And I really was drawn to her. And I really love what she did on Seinfeld. Yeah. But I don't I know much about her. I know it's supposed to she made a string of movies in the 80s that were so camp, like yeah. uh, Ruthless People. Oh, yeah. And, and Big uh, Business. And she did some with Lily Tomlin. She did the... Um, a Big Business, yeah. Big Business. And Outrageous Fortune. Yeah, I love... And, right, and I, I really like those. And it's yeah. that's pretty camp, right? Yeah, absolutely. Super camp. But those kind of bled into mainstream culture, those movies. Those, those oh, well, camp, camp is part of mainstream culture now, for sure. I mean, okay. in such a huge way. Like, think about somebody like John Waters, who went from being such an outsider right. to making oh mainstream God. movies. He mm -hmm. is camp and filth and all that. But the campiness of his movies is what persevered. Like, so as he got more famous, his movies got less dirty and less dirty. Like, mm -hmm. the dirt was more referential, but mm -hmm. the camp was like, yeah, so absolutely. Well, here's what's interesting to me. You asked if all those things were gay or straight, and obviously we yeah. just have fun. But, you know, I feel that gay, gay people or queer people are responsible for, for pushing the margins out. If we live in the margins, you know, we're not the majority. Yeah. Uh, no matter how much we're accepted and whatever it is, we're just biologically, we're not the mar we're not the majority. So we live on the edges. Yeah. And so we, we, we spread out the, we, we are the ones that kind of um, bring things in the periphery into the, into the mainstream. And it does make the whole culture more accepting. And yeah. so it is pretty great when the, I think, you know, it's, um, it's an interesting thing, and, and I that and I think a lot of there are the arts community is it has a lot more gay people in it than straight people, and I think we're drawn to that. There's yeah. a lot of I've read a lot of books about why that is, and and people can debate that, but there the um, the arts community, <clears throat> and the gay community, and the queer community, people who are thinking about things in a non-binary way, in a, in a more non-traditional way, in a more fluid <clears throat> way, they bring more. Uh, uh, <clears throat> more unusualness into the everyday life. So it's interesting that camp, which was, I mean, you look at like, like you said, what John Waters was doing that. Yeah. And now that's like, oh, that's whatever. You know? <clears throat> sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, oh, it's okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's such a great, uh, great point. What would, do you remember any of the names of those books that you're talking about though? That uh, well, there was the Velvet Rage. I remember yes, that. that's a great, that's a great, right? uh, yeah. yeah. I read that and White Fragility, like back to back, which uh -huh. is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, read. So Jeff, tell people where people can find you uh, on social media. On social media, I'm on, I'm on, they can go to jeffgreenspan.com if they want to explain to me why I was wrong about what was gay and what was straight. I'm just, please let me know. Uh, and on Instagram, I'm uh, at, <coughs> at gspan, G-S-P-A-N. And uh, I came down here to run this show. I run a show in, in, uh, in Chattanooga uh, every uh, first and third Friday. Uh, so if they want to come see me in person, they can go to Bode b-o-d-e comedy.com <laughs> and get tickets and if they forget any of these links they can just go to that guy i met.com even though they haven't met me in person if they go to that guy i met.com you can find all my links there and we can say hello in person or on the internet all right awesome jeff thank you so much for being on the show you were killing it oh bless um, your heart thank you for singing wing beneath my wings even though you didn't want I don't to remember it very well it just felt like a, a mother a, a father daughter dance thing yeah I think I think from now on I'm gonna to try to get people to sing on the show, and that's just really oh, the whole dear. point. I wish like you would the whole thing would just be to get people to sing. I um, think you got a pretty good voice. I heard a little as you were trying to help me on backing vocals. I, I heard a, yeah. a, a nice a nice resonance. I've been working on my vocals, but um, so well, Jeff. Thank you so much. This has been Straight People. Uh, if you like the podcast, uh, give us a review or rating on Apple Podcasts because that's super important, apparently. And uh, I keep that's I keep asking. Gay. I keep Super asking gay. every week. I know, right? Follow me, subscribe. Gay, gay, gay. So, okay. Um, bye. Bye. Thank you.